like you know how this goes. Welcome, another Happy Rabbit Productions <laughs> podcast. But I wanted to start it off today with something, just a little uh, mic drop. That's a phone. It's a thousand dollar phone. Yeah. Would you want to drop this? I had to <laughs> drop the shirts. <laughs> I had to like make my point. What's up? <laughs> drop it. What do you got to say, Scoot? Red, V Raptor X, mm-hmm. one gear of the year at 2024. NAB. Did Let's it really? Go. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Year, so huh? I'm like stuck. NAB's award or NAB's some other award won award. like equipment of the year. What Dang. is it? Gear of the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like their biggest award That's cool. and like I the main that. thing they take away from NAB. And boom, we are proud owners of a V Raptor X, which is the gear of the year. That's do you, sick, do you dude. think that they're gonna make a top handle that looks like a crown? <laughs> to kind of to kind of go along with if that victory, Jared was, right? If just, Jared was still yeah. in charge, I think that would be necessary. That would be right. But, yeah, you know. Did you? Yeah. Uh, we, we won't talk about that. <laughs> I, I want to know what he said. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. <laughs> uh, Gear of the year, though. That's yeah, pretty awesome, it, though. It's pretty cool. I didn't know that. And yeah. a lot, a lot of cool stuff has been revealed as the weeks are going, by, or the week is passing us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anybody's over. It is officially. Yeah, it's like Sunday, Sunday to Wednesday. It's just a four-day. Yeah, day yesterday, event. Was, so the yesterday was the last day. Yesterday was the last day. Today's wrap day. Yep. I'm sad we didn't make it out. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I was seeing the videos of everything and like reliving us walking through it, and it's so much cooler in person. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's a ton of but fun. Living person, vicariously yeah. through social media, Instagram totally. stories doesn't really do it for me. I feel but like you learn I'll, more I'll too. Probably the coolest thing I saw, just like peeking through other people. Did you guys see Tenzin posted a twenty by twenty light mat? I didn't. On the aperture booth, dude, that thing looked insane. Twenty by twenty. Twenty by twenty light mat with a quarter grid on it. Oh, that's awesome. I was like, yo, what the heck? Where's this thing been? Because be aperture big. stepping up, they're seeing that they do have a place on sets and yeah, yeah. I mean, they weren't. Well, the, light, they weren't. Light the mat to... has had that for a while. It's, oh, really? It's not anything new. Yeah. Okay. And it's <clears throat> it's a sectional thing, so you mm. you buy the panels in in. I I don't know. In fourths. In, it's like four by two sections. Okay. And then you like. Hmm. Velcro them all together. I wonder if that's how it used okay. to be, because this looked like one complete product. Like, it, like this it does a... look like one complete product. Okay, so interesting. So the, the way that light panels was, you have the sections, you wire them all together, and it turns into one big frame, and then you put the diffusion in front of the big frame. See, I just get impressed by it too much, because I don't know enough. I mean, yeah. Charles, I mean, Charles <laughs> yeah. around it, like, yeah. straight, I'd be like, don't be impressed by that. That's not... I know, it's still cool. It's still cool. <laughs> and it's rad that Aperture's, like, finally catching up, but, mm-hmm. like, light mats had that out for, like, five plus years mm, okay kind of a thing 20 like 20 we were using that, that on high school musical season two mm. i can't thing. handle myself i think next year i'm going to well starting now to next year i'm going to start a savings account and it's going to be the any i'm literally going to name it nab it's a big mason jar yeah gaff tape on it <laughs> and then <laughs> next year we are going down and buying as much gear as we can think of i yeah i'm with you dude. millions you would have to have well, I'm not saying the most expensive. We're not going to all. <laughs> one of everything. Watch He's like, make it rain. Yeah, like, Let me just write a check that says NAB and just hand it to the first guy he sees. Well, and like NAB. Last year, we were fortunate enough. We did pick up an arm and a mm-hmm. badass electric bike that like is super sick. But nothing's worse than going to NAB and seeing all the stuff that you want and not being able to buy it. It's like, yeah. it's right there and yeah. it's on sale. It's, and on sale. it's like being a kid in a candy to take store and your mom's like, let's go home, buddy. Well, it's yeah. like going to a boat show or something <laughs> yeah. and like everything's on sale and they're like, here, just sign these papers and you could have this brand new boat. It's like yeah, that. It's only NAB. 300 bucks a month. You're yeah. like, oh, they're like sure. payment plans, thousand dollars a month and you can have this brand new camera. And it's like, mm, get a thousand dollars rebate. Uh-uh. You're like, oh, I don't know guys. <laughs> Which, if you guys don't know too, something that, has been brought to my attention that's new <laughs> as far as buying gear and stuff like this there are special companies out there that specialize in financing for this kind of stuff mm. so if you're wondering like oh how do people buy this kind of gear or how, how do, do you get do that? Trinity? they don't there aren't going to their like <laughs> local credit union time. and trying to just get a loan there are special companies that understand the industry and so do your research and check in yeah because if you go to your local credit union or, or your local bank or whatever <laughs> And you say, yeah, I want to spend $100,000 on a camera. <laughs> Wells Fargo's going to kick you out the door. Exactly. Dude. Tell you to get GTFO. Can you imagine your interest rates on that, dude? Well, no, that just happened to Charles and I, actually, because we were going to get a 
What size is the box truck? Big box truck. It was like a 24 yeah. footer. Yeah, you're getting like, like and we still will. We still will. Yeah, it's on the plane. Some big. But Happy Rabbit's going to build out like a really badass camera truck because um, Utah is in need. But uh, we realized real quickly how hard it was to get a loan. And when we told them it's going to be on a film set, and they're like, yeah, and how much does it rent for? And we're like, tell them, which is not much. It takes years, like 10 plus years to pay off a camera truck. And they're like, um, yeah, no. They're like, that's cute. And but they, that's, that's sweet. That doesn't line up with that. Yeah. <laughs> and we also didn't take into consideration how much it was to like build out the camera mm-hmm. truck, which was like another 50 grand. So Yeah. Whoop. Yeah. We're putting it on the back burner. It's on right hold. Yeah. It's on hold. We right figured that out with the coffee. It's on the priority yeah. list, but definitely a few <laughs> spots lower than it was like a month yeah. ago. I learned that the hard way with the coffee truck. Yeah. yeah. And that's what? We have 10 feet? Huh? It's a 10-foot box truck? Oh, yeah. Charles, the second he saw the coffee truck, he was like, you know how much work this is? I'm like, oh, I'll be done in a few days, which is kind of like what we were like <laughs> on the psych wall, which took a month. <laughs> Um, but yeah, now we're six months into the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is, it's. So before we like yeah. lose track completely, um, we're going to talk about what new stuff has come out in NAB so that you guys can be recapped if you don't mm-hmm. know, or if you mm-hmm. missed it, if you're not on social media. So we're sorry, but this is going to be more gear talk, uh, picking up kind of where we left off last time. I don't want to spend too much time like dwelling or deep diving into some of the things like we did. Uh, last week, yeah, not so much of details, more just quick, t- more touch just kind of quick. You know. Let's touch on the points, talk sure. about how cool or not cool it is. Um, because we have a lot of stuff to cover. Mm-hmm. Fuji Copy. X100 five, six, six, six. Is that what VI means? VI is six, yeah. I always wondered that was Star Wars, really confused on all that. He's just watching right. them out of order. Dude, that's <laughs> I, I, I grew up playing numerals, yeah. <laughs> I grew up playing Final Fantasy, Charles, like, Final these Fantasy are called numbers or in Roman, Roman numerals, so no, I got but that shit dialed in. Fuji X106. Camera, not of the year. Not of the year. Not of the year. <laughs> but it's insane. This thing has like a nine-month wait on it on mm-hmm. the wait list. I put my name in wow. six months ago to get this thing. Was so stoked. Like it released. They even had a limited edition release. Mm-hmm. Had my name in on yep. all this. We were going to do a Tech Tuesday. And it looks like we're not going to get the camera for another uh, about six-month, boys. Yeah. Sounds Why about wait? right, dude. Because everyone what? wants it. It's like the hot... So yeah, what about it makes it the hot stuff? So have you ever used the X100V, the version that came before this camera? I never have messed with those. Long something It's hard to explain, but there's something just so beautiful about the engineering of that camera that it feels like the most modern tech inside of like an old body. Essentially and that what, fusion just oh, it's so good. Essentially what they did is they took the film look and they put it in a digital format and a small point and shoot. 35 millimeter. Um, you can't not interchangeable lens mm-hmm. um it's just like so it's a shoot. fixed focal length yeah fixed focal, focal length, length yeah. just like uh I, I don't know how it's you, like the classic film camera it's like an olympus it's there's like there's a of huge misconception how much is it into our into our right now age. how much how much does the camera cost i want to uh, wait are we talking on the website or on the market on the website on the website <laughs> at the market 1600 <laughs> okay. on the market guess how much kids are hawking them for three it's okay. just like the komodo I don't know. Four thousand dollars for a yeah. sixteen hundred dollars. For a camera. point and shoot camera. And that's like here's the misconception about it, and we don't need to ramble too much into it. But <laughs> Right, just touch points, right, Charles? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just touch points. I'll touch on this. If you're thinking about buying the camera, wow. it's a fixed lens, thirty five millimeter point and shoot, guys. This is not a vlog camera, it's not a documenting camera. Mm. There are a lot of freelancers that are posting on the Facebook page that bought these cameras and are now trying to sell them because they realize it's not necessarily essential part of their kit. They it's could niche. just go buy a uh what are those little ten dollar Oh, like the Kodak disposables? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I was like, What's... no, being honest, you essentially could go get a Kodak disposable and get the exact same effect, shoot the wedding on that, hand it to them, and you're done, versus spend $1,600 plus accessories to yeah. build something for your kit. Yeah. So that's where you're seeing a lot of those kind of like f- smaller freelancers are now hawking them, 
and people on the wait list are now probably not wanting them. Yeah, 100%. Um, I also think if you're, if you're a video guy, you should inherently have no interest in this camera. This should not interest you. I'm only buying a I don't, even know, I don't even know about it, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. I'm literally exactly. Yeah. only Pay, buying it because it has Wi-Fi built in, yeah. so you can transfer the photos directly to your phone. It has That's nine cool. preset looks that look like film. I mean, it's yeah, weird. The, the, the like, Fujifilm recipes. <laughs> I knew he this, was going to do that. He's going to do this shit. This thing. <laughs> I mean, like... The re- the, once you get into the this, recipes and cooking with the color... Pictures too. Difference. I mean, it's kind of hey, nuts. Like, I team, thought about that. Let man. me finish it's my great. point. This is actually cheaper than your camera, and it's like a freaking computer. Remember, no, <laughs> remember when you guys said, "Let's just talk about quick topics." And I'm sorry, tra- I'm trying to quickly brush over topics of this, and you guys keep rambling deep. Okay, back to the camera. Okay. It has nine presets on it, so you can just literally shoot in all these film looks. And then you can upload the photos directly to your camera. I personally Boom. only bought it to take photos of my newborn. And by the time you're going to get it, she's going to be like a year old. <laughs> what new gear at NAB did you see, Charles? Moving on. Should be able to say X106 by the time you get it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to announce the new generation of cameras before this one anybody has. All, it. You guys want to hear it's something funny. funny? I ordered an X100V. I used to have one, mm-hmm. ordered a new one. They were back ordered all the way up to two months before the six came out. Essential Photography downtown <laughs> called me. And they're like, hey, we got the X100V in for you. And then I read on a forum that the six was coming out. And I was like, I'm okay. Next thing you know, two months later, that comes out, get on the list. Now I can't get it for another nine months. So essentially when that comes out, the next one will come out. You yeah. I've never had one of these cameras. I used to have one. Okay. Yeah, I had an X100V. I loved it. Such a good camera. Awesome. Interesting. Sweet. Well, since we're on the topic <laughs> of cameras, uh, what other cameras came out? Let's just quickly talk about it, guys. Black Magic. Black Magic. <laughs> Black yeah. Magic. The okay. Pixies. We're not going to be able to get through this one fast. And but... the Ursa. Yeah. Lame. Very interesting. Pixies seems like the Komodo killer, in a sense. It seems like what Lame. it's trying to do. So, okay. And this is, <laughs> this is where we're going to kind of get through the mud. It's <laughs> trying to be a news... Is that what it is? A nuisance. A nuisance. Where, the, where you wear the cone on your head and sit dunce. in the back. Dunce. dunce. I'm trying to be a dunce right now, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's give him a dunce I don't cone. think it'll be a Komodo killer. Yeah? I mean, I I think that Black Magic and Red are on different levels. Mm. Black Magic, I feel like, is aiming more towards uh, student filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Videographers. Videographers. Mm-hmm. People, people on that kind of like starting out, entry level mm-hmm. kind of a thing, right? Mm-hmm. And... And then red with the even with the Komodo, I mean, you're you're talking about a three thousand dollar price difference just mm. for the body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like that's kind of like the next step up. Like, mm. wait, quickly, I'm in school, something. and then red is like I'm starting to make money. I need something that's more professional. Quickly, right. want to add on to that with the red verse that if you, to make a red work, you need probably five thousand dollars in accessories. To make yeah. the black right. magic work, you need maybe a thousand dollars in accessories. Sure. Well, the eyepiece alone is so maybe, $1,600. Bucks, so, I mean, like, maybe it's more of like the FX3 Magic. range. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe it's trying to compete with like the FX3. Yeah. The FX3 is around $3,000. Yeah. And that like low-end cinema can still perform at a higher level, but in a lower package mm-hmm. right. type situation. It seems maybe that's what they're going for. I don't for. like it. You don't like it? No, because I think they had a lot behind them with the pocket cameras. I think the 4K and 6K was really like putting – they did put them on the map and made them like a strong company. And then yeah. now the studio cameras and everything else came kind of out of that look. and Yeah. M- that form factor? Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. They had really good potential to, I think, make a really strong camera. Mm -hmm. And I think they went for more of the lower end, Mm. which. So let me explain. Can I explain that a little bit? Yeah. So what Blackmagic's MO is, is that they're all about saving money in in the production, in the manufacturing of the camera itself. And so what they do, and this is their timeline. You can look it up. They've even talked about it. What they do is they create internal components and they try to keep those internal components lasting as long as they can mm. and is that's that why we've had the most money for them yes at the that's cons- like sensors and processors but that's it, how they make it, things so cheap but is that at our what's the word i'm looking for mm-hmm. are they like wringing the towel with us 100 percent kind of thing like they're trying to get as much money as they can out of their technology 100 mm. yes mm. at the consumer's which what, makes it discretion or it's, yeah. it's not expense, at our it's yeah, not at expense, our expense yeah. though because of how cheap their products are. Hmm. That makes sense. Most of their products. Most of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And so, like, and so then what they do is that they came out with a sensor, like their full frame sensor is brand new. It came out last year when they came out with the Pocket full frame mm-hmm. camera and the Pocket Pro or whatever yeah, they yeah, call 6K it. Yeah, Six K Pro. Or something yeah. Like that. Um, and so that's their new sensor that they then took and put into the new body. So last year was the sensor. This year is the better form factor. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to run this out as long as they can until until the sensor in their brain is done. And then they'll come out with new sensor technology that they'll put back inside this Pixis style Hmm. body. And then and then we'll run with the Pixis style body for, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. So they kind of leapfrog the body. I agree, but I just think in general from like a non technical like super tech aspect if you're looking at them as like an umbrella versus like the other brands i feel like they have like a niche and they had like a lead in that market mm-hmm. and like people were starting to reference space. them as like a pretty reasonable brand like you could say like we're gonna bring black magic for our nba job the first yeah. thing we said instead of komodos was we have three black magic studios that we could run an interview piece on and they were totally fine with that there yeah. wasn't a second where they're mm-hmm. like Oh, that's a cheaper camera. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, They've definitely built their name up over the last, especially the Ursa. You know, where seven I think I get years, I get yeah. bummed out. Where like, what was their cinema camera? They're like Ursa. twelve thousand. The Ursa. The original. Yeah. Yeah, the Ursa. Original and that was Ursa. like you had one, right? I did. Yeah. And so, and then you had the pocket. I had the pocket. Like they were like, and then now I don't think we would look at them as a camera we would buy. We're looking at like more of a Komodo and like that kind mm. of stuff. And that, that's what I'm saying. The entry level versus more professional level. Like we're not really Which, in that entry level game anymore. I know, but it felt like they were trying to get up there so hard mm. to the professional level. And mm-hmm. then I feel like they just jumped 10 steps back. Right. Well, I've, yes. And, and no. with their, so their new 612, to, or, the 12K. Coloring board too. They're kind of just like, I feel like they're just taking All the consolation back. stuff. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that in a sec. I'm going to buy it. You oh. should do it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm out of this one. No, but <laughs> I want to jump in. <laughs> no, but let's talk about. Well, we're gonna finish up the camera stuff first, though. So the Pixis, my and issue. and I are gonna box. <laughs> I personally love the body. Okay. I love the form factor. I think they nailed it as far as that's concerned. <gasps> yeah. Um, what I don't like is that they just took the sensor from the pocket camera and just stuck it inside of it. it over. Because right now they're battling, and in the camera world, you're fighting against other cameras that. Let's, for example, Zcam. That's, Zcam is direct competition that's what I'm with saying. the Pixis, right? Zcam is coming in at 15 stops of dynamic range. But hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Blackmagic <laughs> is still at 13 stops 13. of dynamic range. And for me, 13 stops is unacceptable now when you have other companies from China with cameras that are less expensive. With more range. With more dynamic range. I have too many topics. <laughs> you can You're about to blow up. And thought, go ahead. <laughs> I saw something. I could be wrong. Our GoPro now shoots over 12 bit in their new GoPro. 12 bit. Over 12 bit color. Dang. I'm not a colorist. Mm-hmm. I don't know too much in that realm, mm-hmm. right? I saw a forum that said if you Bluetooth now your footage from the GoPro app and download it to your phone, because the bit or the color bit is so high. The phone can't process it correctly, and there's all these issues with the new GoPro and processing footage to your phone and saving it in your hmm. library. I don't own it. I was reading it. But my question to you is, when you say anything under 13 bits is unacceptable. No, it's stop, stops, stops of, range. of dynamic range, oh. not bits. Not Sorry. bit depth. I can't call it up there. I don't know why I heard bit depth, maybe. No. So you... you you know what stops the dynamic range is, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. How much it can see into the darks and how much it can see into the into into shadows. the highlights. Mm-hmm. Highlights and shadows, yeah. Um, but at what price point is twelve? Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like, so like accessible. the ZCam E2 F6 Pro is four fifteen hundred four thousand dollars <laughs> for the F6 Pro, mm-hmm. which you get a gold mount or which a V mount tra- battery plate on it. You know, you get PL EF well, all the whatever lens adapters you can put on it. It comes with a monitor on the top. Um, it's a great camera. It's full frame uh, versus the Blackmagic Pixis, which is also a 6K camera. It is also full frame. Um, you're kind of stuck into the lens mount that you buy it. So you can buy it in L, PL, or EF. But can't switch it. You cannot switch lens mounts on it, though. Um, you can adapt like any you can, camera. Yeah, you can adapt it. So, uh, but it's 13 stops of dynamic range. So in my opinion, is the extra two stops of dynamic range worth $1,000? Yes. Hmm. But with Blackmagic, you can also film raw. 
you get black magic raw where z cam you don't really have a raw so i mean there's trade-offs you know what i mean Hmm. yeah to to the lower end camera market but i still think that yes you get raw but at the cost of two stops to dynamic range personally i would rather have the extra two stops in that level of camera can we just shout out companies like z camera for pushing the market at the lower price point and sure the can. stuff they're giving the consumers yeah it's amazing um, especially from like other countries and stuff the u.s has kind of had like a it's weird they try to almost like hold their consumers in like this like box to where you're seeing from these other countries you know these cameras are coming out and it's like here you go yeah. and uh five thousand dollars and they're using them on big sets in other countries it's just mission it is impossible. like this stigma here yeah it's, about this, it's a lot more a lot more than mission impossible actually they're they're kinson's just like really quiet about what he posts Why wouldn't but they they, they, they use that, that camera he posts what he can I'm on sure what they use policy. but like there's other bigger shows that are actually using these cameras as like crash cams as like c and d cameras and, and stuff once like that, that comes on theaters i'm sure we're just gonna see it everywhere. yeah um so anyways that's that's kind of my view on it. i love the body style i yeah. love what they do i love how you can hook a cell phone up to it <coughs> and stream like uh to the to their black magic cloud if mm -hmm. you have one of mm -hmm. those and you can have Direct an editor boxes. Yep. remotely like editing stuff as you're filming on set right. like i love Which that pretty much stuff. the only it's way like... to get that before was red Red yeah. Raptor introduced that yeah. on the last generation yeah. of cameras. Direct upload to frame IO of proxies so your editor can get going right away. You know, and now so when to get that in three thousand dollars, that's insane. <laughs> like that's nuts. That's really you know? dope. And I love how they're pushing that stuff, the boundaries of that technology. But like as far as looking at it from a strictly like a DP or a shooter mm -hmm. standpoint, man, thirteen stops of dynamic range. I feel like that was so like. 2007 seven years yeah. ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. yeah and let's talk about jumping back to the v raptor x did you know how you can record proxies onto one card and then you're raw to another yeah and then you can dump your proxies straight to your editor and yeah so like they're getting way smarter with that post-production process right. and, like, or the the, yeah. or your regular production pipeline where one of your sdis has your key built into it yeah. right and then your other mm -hmm. doesn't so that one monitor can see your stuff with your background change and the other one like your dp doesn't have to see that shit Right. Like, oh, dude, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. Let's talk about the, what Scooter's going to buy. The new Blackmagic 12K? The Ursa. The Ursa 12K? The Ursa, Ursa 12K. Pro. We're still yes. talking about Blackmagic. Cameras. Yeah, cameras. Blackmagic cameras. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I'm going to get the color. That's not a camera. <laughs> All right, talk about your camera. <laughs> If, get it if it comes with a studio upgrade. If it does, hook a boy up, you know? Oh, if it does, oh my gosh. If they put it in a $500 piece, I will I find someone does. from Black Magic and box them. See if it does. Let's complain real quick. A lot of their new stuff is getting rid of it. We can so complain. Much. And did you notice they updated their website to say which cameras and what accessories yep. come with? I did. Probably, Probably because after of we us. raised us. Probably yeah, because of about Okay, it. let's yeah. talk about that, though. Something Black Magic probably fixed. I haven't looked at their website. Is it relative to how much you're spending now and like no it's just newer all. products it's okay, just so anything in the last year okay, you don't we're get calling them out we're calling them out because it's kind of bullshit we spent over 10 grand with black magic buying a studio <clears> set up in different things so the studio camera 6k <gasps> yeah it's the right g is it a g2 g2 sounds yeah, right. yeah so we're shooting on these right now so we record in our studio they're the 6k studio cameras we bought they came out last year brand spanking new they're twenty five hundred dollars cameras a pop a piece and we bought a switcher and we bought a switcher another 12 and or 13 with all the stuff we needed to make it all work the accessories SDI, which that doesn't XLRs. really matter the idea is with most of their bodies and main products you get their three hundred dollar DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition, the Pro, the which Pro. is a big a big deal because yeah, the software three hundred bucks and every computer so needs its it. own license. So the more you have, you can all have a license. Your multiple computers, your office computer, home computer, whatever that may be, right? We're like, okay, hey, our team's good. We can give everyone a license. Four and everyone, cards, yeah. Everyone's covered. Yeah, for each product, yeah. Nope, none of them came with it. But yeah, so their studio, a twenty five hundred dollar studio camera, doesn't come with DaVinci Resolve. But, but their twelve hundred dollar, <laughs> whatever pocket, pocket camera, camera does. Their, their, their four hundred dollar speed editor. Yes, yeah. four hundred dollar speed editor comes with two three hundred dollar licenses. Yeah. Yes. So explain what? that to us, Black Magic. <laughs> How is it that we spend twenty five hundred dollars on a professional camera, 
and three. you don't give us the license. Three professional. But professors. you do s send two licenses with a speed editor. I mean, come on, guys. So essentially, Rob, I mean, it's no. not the end of the yeah. world, but our team yes, was is. a little upset, essentially, because the team each had to spend $300 on licenses after spending all this money to then use everything with our line edits and to do mm -hmm. our workflow with their yeah. stuff. Here, which, yeah. I don't know. I, I love black magic. I'm learning Da Vinci Resolve. I'm learning coloring. Mm -hmm. I'm diving more deep into that world and understanding it. That was Alex to tell you where to sit. He was putting markers down, oh. but it was in the wrong spot. It totally was. It needs to be it's right it's right it's Smack dab in the middle, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so let's talk about the new 12K <clears throat> Ursa real quick. We're not Are you good? Color not yet. yet. No, we haven't talked about the new camera. It's, <laughs> it's rad. All right, All right talk about it. So <laughs> yeah, here's the touch points. I don't know too much. I I, I shot a short film on the original Ursa, and I loved the camera. Yeah, and I had the original. Had Charles loved his Ursa. It had some I did. quirks. So it I was had excited. Quirks, to see, I was excited to see what they could do to fix that. It was a super cool camera. You yeah. know, for three or four thousand dollars, you know, you got a, a what felt like at the time like a good <clears> cinema <throat> camera. Yeah. Um. So they just came out with a new 12K camera. Wow. It's full frame, which is amazing. And they also came out with new body style for mm -hmm. it as well. And it has monitors on both sides mm -hmm. for the camera mm -hmm. operator and the assistant. Um, and, yeah, it's rad. It's honestly what they should have come out with last year when they came out with the 12K. Because everybody's like, 12K is too much. And, and it is, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but it has a new, like, their own memory module that you can yep. plug into it's it. Like which internal is, is like 8 terabytes of an internal eight memory terabytes, module. 8 terabytes because it's Insane. 12K. Yeah, yeah. It eats up a lot of data, um, which is super cool. Um, it can do what, what would happen if you use that camera a lot with the drive is there a way to like replace that internal memory i think it's a, i think it's, it's a not removable internal. It's module a, it's a module oh yeah. and then what's rad is they now have um a deck that you can plug those modules in to offload the footage it's a dock camera too it's a it's a camera that you don't have to you don't have to use their memory if you don't want to you can plug in a mm. module and you can use cf express if you want Awesome. Okay. But I'm just saying, like, it's, it's a. Legos. I'm thinking of it as like a, um, kind of like our NBA job type camera, where it's like run and gun, dump media, go out, document, oh, yeah. come in, dump media, like concert stuff and like event type. For things. sure. Yeah. yeah That's yeah, cool. Yeah, because yeah, it still has that body form factor mm -hmm. of the Ursa. They just put a monitor on both sides. Oh. On the on in the, case you have a second on ops, the assistant yeah. side. The assistant. They put a monitor over there, which is pretty cool. I don't know how I actually I didn't see this camera. I'm no, no it internal right NDs, right? Uh, I don't think I don't remember seeing that. I don't remember seeing that. No either. internal NDs. I don't think so. Mm, and then yeah, I, are, we, are we at like a hundred? Have to. Are we at hundred twenty frames though, yeah. per second on that? Is it twelve K one twenty? Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Because the pocket six Ks had internal NDs. The pro right? bump. The, the pro. pro so they would have okay. to put it in, in their higher. Even but even the also, Ursa, it has to have ND because the old Ursa had it. That's true. But there's also two distinctions, isn't there? Like, didn't they drop two new Ursas? No, just the no. Just the pro word. I could have sworn yeah. there was another one. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But yeah. Yeah, just the Pixis and the, the pro. Pixis the and the pro. Things cool. What's the cool, price cool. point? It's fourteen thousand dollars without the EVF, and they came out with a new EVF which connects via USB C, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, so USB C is cool now, huh, Charles? For that ask for that, <laughs> I would say it's o it's okay. But yes, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm know. a little stunned by the price point. That's their most expensive camera they've dropped on the market. Uh, yeah. Yeah. From yeah. their company. So. I mean, the 12K when it first came out was like six thousand. Do you think they were sad right. when yeah. Red won Camera of the Year instead of them with their new drop? No, well, because it's not really pushing the boundaries. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it still is, like, 16 so stops. Just there's no, there's nothing jaw-dropping about it. It's it's a camera. It's a box. It's like a it's, new it's, form. Yeah, All they did was a new form factor, and it's still but 12K. But 15 grand, I mean, there needs to be a little bit of, like, a kind of mic drop, of, at least in yeah. my opinion, if you're not competing in that, like, call it Komodo range, right? Sure. Call it 10K and under. If you're above 10K... You have to consider every camera that is ten thousand or less, right? Which is Komodos and everything else out there. The new Komodo X. I'm kind of a red fanboy right now, but so I I think I think where they're coming from and to compete with the Komodo X, which I feel ya, mm -hmm. um, is that it's full frame and it's twelve K. Isn't the new Komodo X? No. It's still eight K. It's is it? It's super thirty five still. 
Why did I think the new X was full frame? No. It's global shutter. It has a global shutter. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, it's still but, super 35. Which is arguable. Some people want that. Yeah. No, for sure. You know what I'm for saying? For sure. So, which, I which I don't, I've never understood that. And maybe that's something that we could talk about either right now or at another time. But like, if I buy a full frame camera and I want to shoot super 35, it's weird because you can go into the menu and go super 35 mode and then it and crops. Th- and just crops in onto yeah. the sensor. Mm-hmm. Right. So, why not have the ability to do both worlds? Right. And lens types. Yeah, know, so that way you're not limiting yourself to a lens type. Whereas Super 35, like, where most manufacturers are making full-frame lenses nowadays, they're not making specific Super 35 lenses anymore. And so, like... The only way I would do that is if I owned, like, a 35 set of lenses where I needed the camera to match my lens set kind of thing. Right, and as an owner-operator, but you're dialing, you're, like, narrowing yourself yeah. down. Which is also why Which I don't know why you... is nice, because you have enough resolution to spare. Yeah. I do that on my 4K Sony, and I'm fucked. Like, you can clearly see what's right. going on when I press in optical clear zoom or super 35. You right. can tell there's an issue there. But, yeah, with an 8K or a 12K sensor, you have enough resolution to spare that you can crop in on that sensor and get your super 35 lenses on that full-frame camera and be functioning just the same. Right. So I don't, you can I don't know. use super 35 lenses on a full frame camera and crop. Mm-hmm. You can't use full frame lenses, full frame on, lenses a on, a on a crop sensor, sensor camera. On a crop you sensor can, camera. you can. It's just your 50 millimeter turns into an 85 millimeter. You had to right. do a 1.5 X multiplication. Or your, your this is and this is the <clears throat> yeah. problem where putting full frame glass on a super 35 camera is your widest. Oh, you're limited by your widest lens. So if you have a 20 millimeter lens, I'm not going to say the name. Full frame, and you put it on a super 35, it turns you know into a say. 35 millimeter. Lens. Around there. Yeah. Do you remember? I'm not going to say the it's name or anything. 2.7. But yeah. Dumb, yeah. Do you like, remember the project we did where so and so, who was in charge, did not know that the camera was super 35 and that our lenses named. were full frame. Oh, yes. And so when he was calling for lenses and everything, and then he was so confused. What's on wrong what, with the, Why are they vignetting? He was getting mad. <laughs> he was dude. getting mad he at me. He was getting pissed. And he's like, why scene, he's like look, what's wrong with What's my wrong? Sh- why doesn't this look right? And, and I had to pull him aside. I think I did. And then you did as yeah. well. And have, and we had to explain like, hey, that's this isn't how this So works. if you take a big square and a small circle, <laughs> it doesn't. You see all that? <laughs> this is yeah. Like, like, <laughs> this is on a feature film. It's huge. It's a multi-million dollar feature film and the DP didn't understand crop ratios. Dude, And that's, that's all we're going to say. Yeah. About it. Yeah. So I guess <laughs> running back to the Ursa, you, you basically mentioned that it needs to compete with everything that's kind of below that 10K ballpark. But in my opinion, doesn't it also need to kind of compete around the 20K? Well, that's the what, Burano, the but, Burano but is only five thousand dollars away. But that's what I'm saying. It what, doesn't even yeah, touch how much that. more am I getting from the Burano if I go those extra five k than that twelve k? I like that's a huge I don't know. Gap so right actually, there. the Burano is kind of the, the Burano is kind of garbage. I'm oh sorry. shit! Yeah, I will call them out. I'll be honest. There are a lot of operators, owner ops, and DPS that have bought that camera, mm-hmm. and they're dumping them, and right they're now. dumping them for Dang. cheap because and no one's buying them because they're. Because it wasn't an FX6 and it wasn't a Venice, <laughs> it landed awkwardly in yeah. between and didn't well, really check either box. Well, they shot themselves in the foot with like not coming out with all the anamorphic stuff. Yeah, you know, like and there's yeah, a and bunch of global things. shutter. So the camera doesn't have the support that it needs, basically. No, and mm. so a lot and of the global shutter is a big one too. When they just did the A1, right, the or A7, the brand new Sony mirrorless camera that has global yeah. shutter yeah that's insane why did you not put that in your cinema bodies right like that's a it's pretty weird. big one it's so dumb. weird it's kind of slapping your consumer and they're using losing a lot of faith in their consumers yeah and they kind of shot the industry a little bit and like it's going to be interesting to see how they recover with their next camera yeah and how the industry perceives it mm-hmm. uh i think they're kind they kind of went down the hole that red was in yeah. with their old cameras where there was all these things that like was a reason to not jump into red i think the brano is a lot of that yeah where Damn. reds jumped out of that mm-hmm. and everything of like what made people go away from red like uh the epic media and the Scarlet, that world and like all that type of stuff like they fixed all of that yeah to where like now like arguably and i know i'm gonna keep going back to it but like it's i mean it's it gear won. the year, yeah, it's gear gear the year. year. The i show. do hope though so this is I, do, I honestly hope and pray that the same thing that's happening with sony doesn't happen with red and nikon mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Because I just see Get these like. In the mud. Should we these... talk about that real quick? Sure. Red and Nikon. I see these big companies that like Sony's a massive company, but they just don't make cameras, right? They they make. TVs and projectors and Walkmans. <laughs> like yeah. tons of electronics. Like they're an electronics PlayStations, company. yeah. It, yeah. And so like I honestly and Nikon kind of is too. Like they make a lot of stuff besides mm, I guess they're like just binoculars. They're just a camera. They're glass. Yeah, I guess the printers, stuff they're glass. Like that. They're mostly they make glass. Printers? I think I make printers. Maybe yeah. I think in Canon. I think no. you're thinking Canon. No, Canon's the same way. I like, have I have the same issue with Canon. Because Canon's an electronics company. At least there's no work. And I hate to say it, but like their cameras, as far as cinema cameras go, are kind of garbage. And honestly, I still love UC70. <laughs> <laughs> but like, have you ever been on a film set where you're like, yeah, we're filming on, I don't even know what the Canon cinema camera is right now, because we never use it. Uh, I know, it's like the C70 or something. C70, yeah. The yeah. big one? Uh, not their bigger one. That's more like What's their the big one. Called? Their C seventy is more like their FX six, basically. Yeah, but I don't. I don't remember I don't the name of their know. big one. And then that's their, my their point. Venice, a com- like, a competitor. we work on movies all the time, and like and we don't Canon even know guy. what the Canon cinema camera is because mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but Canon, it's garbage. You're not listening to what the needs are of your. Oh, rough mouth. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll talk about this real quick because I think there's the industry where a few people are nervous about the red and, like. They're, like, not sure where it's going to go. Here's the thing. Nikon is a huge company. They have massive infrastructure outside of the U.S. They have massive reach outside of the U.S. And outside of the U.S., they are one of the biggest photography companies in the world. That being said, Red is one of the best, most integrative cinema companies in the world. Innovative. Most respected, too. Innovative Mm -hmm. and respected. Now, Red has Nikon's infrastructure. They have their factories. Mm -hmm. They have their Their testing abilities, their patents. I think it's going to be insanely huge for Red now that they have Nikon's backing and technology to put that together. Like, think about, like, if you're in a building and now you get to go to a building 10 times the size all over the world with, like, unlimited infrastructure... Now you can build anything. Yeah. I yeah. think we're going to see Red coming out with uh, cameras that are going to be in the DSLR world. That will be The comparable. Red SLR? No way. I think we're going to get Red SLR 100%. I think we're going to get Red Cine Glass, like mm, Aries Cine Glass. Like the old G ones? Yeah. I yeah. Think, Hell yeah. And I think it'll take like Canon Cine Glass out of the market, yep. like all that stuff. I think Red gonna, mount? I think they're going <laughs> to come in. I hope not. R mount? Uh but I think we're going to see some really freaking cool stuff as well as we're going to see a reamp in Nikon mm-hmm. coming into the market with some badass photography cameras. Yeah, dude. I think it's going to be huge. I think I agree. people are completely yeah. underestimating and to be honest, being a little naive thinking that what they see in the US market is it when yeah. like realistically the US market is so freaking small when it comes to this stuff. Like we're most like of this group. stuff is made outside of <laughs> yeah. the US. Yeah. No, I agree. I totally agree. And I, it's just, I do have like a, a lot of people have the fear. Like, I just hope that they are smart about it and don't do like a Sony, a Sony Burano yeah. move. You know what I mean? Spread themselves. Kind because of Red has done that in the past. Like, Did you Red see came the out with pictures the, with the Jared phone. and the new owner. At <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I the interviews yeah. they did. The Red phone. Yeah. I mean, come on. Which like tank? Innovative. No, <laughs> tanked. Innovative. No, but here's the thing with that. It almost didn't tank. It almost didn't. The only reason why it did is they didn't have the infrastructure of the phone. They didn't have the operating system, really. Right. That was the main problem. Uh-huh. Now imagine, I'm not saying they're going to build a phone, right? But comparable to like whatever. Now imagine if they have all the infrastructure of all the factory technology and everything. Nikon that phone phones. would have been freaking. If yeah. Nikon X Red yeah. phone, a Nikon phone with red camera in it, everyone would have been like, oh shit, okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. So, maybe. I don't maybe. know. Because it's, it's tough. I, I mean, we're talking about phones. There's very few disruptive companies to that space. Like Samsung and Apple are you obviously the OGs. Yeah, yeah, there's one. Compete. The OnePlus basically is like the only phone I can even think of that's like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm kind of on the market here. But even then, yeah, like that's just a difficult, difficult space to break into. So I'm excited to see what Red and Nikon do going forward. Yeah. I think a lot of our issue here in America is that we take most of our information from memes. Yeah. We're all heavily addicted to social media. And so it's funny to call Nikon the potato camera. And it's funny to do this. And it's funny to say that, oh, you shoot on this, you don't know, blah, 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 whatever. The reality is professional 
photographers inside of the concert space, inside of the wildlife spa- space, National inside Geographic of the product photography, National Geographic. Mainly shot on Nikon. Almost every single like professional sporting event, the photographs are Nikon. Almost every single professional photo you've seen from Geogra- or National Geographic, Nikon. Like they are imaging professionals. And a bunch of dipshits with Canons and Sony DSLRs <laughs> on Instagram it's think true. that they're funny to call it a potato. And you don't know what you're really talking about. And so that pollutes I, our perception. I couldn't agree more with everything you're saying. Though. Yeah, like, that pollutes our pisses perception. Nothing me off more. Like, I'm a Canon owner. I own a yep. 1DX Mark III. It's not the best camera on the market. It yeah. fits my needs and how I shoot mm-hmm. for what I do. Great. But, like, to think that's a good photography camera. That's the be-all, end-all. That's the one. That's the crown. It's It's not a good photography camera. No, it's not. And I've been learning that with my Sony camera because I'm a huge Sony fanboy. And when I was in Arizona getting my brother's studio set up with a couple other cameras, I realized I was like, damn, this Sony is not performing how I need it to because I'm trying to push it into a live streaming setup. And, hey, I've never even done that before. And so, yeah, in its lane, it's a great camera for me. But now I'm trying to push it into Have features. you ever shot with Hasselblad? No, I've seen them, though. But same thing, right? Incredibly you shoot niche. with one of those, like a freaking $20,000 photography camera, and you're yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, bringing it back because we only have a few minutes left. Can, Can we talk about my thing real quick? Yes. <laughs> real quick. Go ahead. Okay. I'll just explain the background so the audience <laughs> gets it if you're listening. Charles is a colorist. I'm not. I found a cool coloring board. Charles is getting he a said coloring it's shit. board. I'm not. Charles calls me out for wanting this coloring board. <laughs> I think it makes sense <sighs> for a consumer's perspective. Charles doesn't. No, it does. But perfect topic for a thing such as somebody listening, like us, thinking, oh, <laughs> that's a cool color board. I've seen dope. Colorists on Instagram look super sick with their setups on their desk with their wheels. Maybe I should invest into that. Oh, wait. It's $2,000. Never mind. Oh, wait. Blackmagic just came out with one for $500. Purchase. (laughs) Why is that a bad idea? It's not a bad idea. If you have $500 to spend, it's burning a hole in your pocket. I'm going to box Charles right now, guys. Then do it. (laughs) But here's here's my point. (laughs) And this this was my my argument is that DaVinci Resolve, if you're like not familiar with it or like coloring, if that you know is like a a thing that you're just learning, you don't need a control surface or a control panel to color. You can do everything in Resolve in the UI in as it is. You you but pay three hundred dollars for the Pro version of it. You can do it with a keyboard and a mouse. I've graded multiple feature films with a keyboard and a mouse. That's all. And then I would say if you start making money and you start getting paid to do it, then, yeah, like let's start looking at like how to make that coloring process faster because that's what the control surfaces do is they enable you to move faster in the software. It doesn't help you become a better colorist. It doesn't help you like learn the software faster. But, but it's just does, speed. It, does it make you look cooler on social media when you post a photo with it? <laughs> that's all Scooter really cares about. Uh, to me, you're do- talking to the wrong person. I don't give a shit about that stuff. <laughs> you're lying. He's got the most followers out of all of us. No, I don't. You Dude, do. I will say, I've used the panel. Oh, you're past me, bro. I'm I'm tanking. Everyone's leaving my Instagram. <laughs> we'll explain that. But enough, Charles man. made the good point. After This was like a 6 a.m. Conver- text conversation, <laughs> by the way. I was trying to catch up. <laughs> Coming back he your he made a good point at the end on. of it, yeah, it, where he explained it, I think, better. And it was like, if... We, if I was gonna go buy my first motorcycle, you wouldn't let me go buy a Honda Rebel when I could spend a couple, a little bit more money and get my Harley. You know what I mean? So I get that. I mean, I can see both sides of the road. I'm not that type of person. It only seems one. No, I, and I'm not either. I'm Which, not either. Here's where I'm at with it. I understand where you're saying, go spend five hundred dollars. Here's, I mean, I am that person where. Like if I'm going to buy something and I could spend more to buy the best, knowing that in a little bit, once I get comfortable with whatever that is, I'm going to want the better one anyway, I will hands down right off the bat. I'm that person that just buys the nicest one off the shelf. I'm like that with kind of everything. (laughs) Drones, cameras. Everything is bad. It's actually not good with me. Guns. That's my point. (laughs) That's the reason why I was saying this because, dude, I know you. I love you. You're going to want to – you're going to outgrow that $500 panel – the way I looked at it <laughs> is I, not a colorist who doesn't get paid to color things, it would be personal, 
projects, happy rabbit projects, things that we do, which you mainly color our paid projects, etc. But it would be for personal use. And in that sense, I can't justify $2,000 on something just for fun on my keyboard. Willy nilly. Yeah. Totally. And if, and if that's where you're coming I from. I could justify 500 And now here's like your point. Could you edit like normal on your normal keyboard for like After Effects? Do you need like a crazy After Effects keyboard? Absolutely not. You could just like use it like normal and not be extra. If you're that person <laughs> extra. who's extra, you, you got some LED lights in your setup, you got a movable desk, like you're that type of person who like cares more about the look than you do about the function more or less ish. Yeah. It's gonna, look, it's gonna look great on your desk. It makes it's sense. It's gonna look great on your desk. It's a five hundred dollar paperweight at some point because you're probably not gonna use Fair. it as much. As much, I get that. That's kind of where I'm at. Is like yeah, I, cool. I get both sides of the road. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll so say do this. I. I, totally I, I totally was do. Rolling, I totally if do. we had movies like crazy and we yeah. were just doing, doing our shit left and right, I'd probably buy the two thousand dollar one just just because. Just cause, yeah. man. That's yeah. who I am. And I I'll probably say, still wouldn't, cause I wouldn't be coloring at that point. I'd be hiring a colorist. That's fair. <sighs> I'll say this, dude. I used the color panels. When <laughs> I, I was don't in know film school. Buddy. <laughs> I used the panels when I was wrong. in film school, and I really, really liked <laughs> that you could feel like you have like a tactile control, and then you could just look at your image as you're adjusting your color. Whereas I feel like when you're working with keyboard and mouse and you're in the UI, you're like looking at what you're trying to control in your UI. You're not looking at your image. You have to like make an adjustment and then check. Yeah, it's definitely looks. a step. Make an adjustment and then check. Whereas if you got that panel on your hands, you can roll your, like, oh, I need my highlights more red. You can watch your highlights shift into red because you're looking at that while moving this. Yeah. And to some degree, that definitely saves a lot of speed, but it also makes you feel cooler. So we're <laughs> we're filming this podcast before we're headed to set right now. We're, we have a job later this today. And we I just noticed the time. We do have to cut it short. Yeah. So we're gonna call it here. Okay. If no, you, we're not. We have to talk about lenses still. Nope. We had no, to. No, we gotta load in the van and go. Uh, I love you. Yeah, we gotta go. I love you. But if you went to NAB and <laughs> you guys have Charles, gear that so many lenses we're not talking about. I know, I know. I love you, Charles, but we gotta go. We can't be late. I love uh, you guys. So the new if you lenses went to are NAB glass? and you have gear that you, you go. got Charles looking at me like I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys have gear that you want to talk about, post in the comments, share us the stuff you guys bought. And Charles, don't kill me. I love you guys. We got to go work. <gasps> Bye. <laughs> Bye. See ya.